Is this the craziest component in hi-fi today? What is it? The shkit. Sin. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this odd but awesome device. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking this video and subscribing. I do this for a living, so it means the world to me if you like and subscribe. This is all free content, and that helps me create more free content. Over 600 videos, so chances are there's something out there for you. Amps, DAGs, turntables, speakers, all sorts of stuff. So thank you for watching. A little background on this product, the Schkit Sin. Uh, apparently it's been in development for like two years. I was just down in Corpus Christi talking to Jason Stoddard about this product. We did a live stream. I did a live stream. He was on the live stream. Talk about this product a lot. I'll link that if you want to watch it. I'm going to try to explain this now, kind of what it is. And then at the end of the video, talk about who I think this product is for. This is the front panel. You can see we have five knobs a headphone output, a mic input, and a couple of buttons. I've had this upstairs running home theater for about a week, but let's not talk about that till later. Let's talk about what all these cool buttons and dials on the front do. On the front, we're gonna go left to right. Number one is the input switch. We have three inputs. We have two digital, one USB and one optical. And then there is an analog input. There's an LED underneath each input. Left is USB-C, middle is optical, and then the right is analog. Number two is the mode select, and you press it to choose the mode. So if you have no light, this gets a little bit complicated. If you have no lights, it's stereo output only. All the surround channels are off, no processing. Left light only is surround channels on, no processing, of the main channels, right light only, surround channels off, width and present controls on, and it will affect the main channels. This mode accessed only through the remote control. We're gonna talk a little bit about the remote control later. Both lights, surround channels on, width and presence controls on, main channels affected by width and presence. That is the mode that I was running this in the most, but Obviously, there's a lot of other modes. Then you have a headphone jack next to that. When you plug the headphones in, it mutes everything off. All right, the first dial is surround level. Controls the output level of the surround channels. So, surround gain, your rear channel gain. Dial next to that is center channel level. Obviously, that controls the gain of the center channel. Then you have the master volume. The next dial is the width. So, kind of self-explanatory. It narrows or widens the sound stage. Last knob is presence, and it's not just a center gain, but it's pretty much vocal. So vocal, you're gonna push vocals forward or push them back. And then the microphone input. Let's talk about the remote. So this is the remote, okay? I've seen a lot of remotes like this. This is normally the remote you get with a, you get with the skit. Is usually you get one like this. This works. Works just fine. I wish it was like the other remote. However, there is a plus side. You, you're you not going to confuse this if you have other Skit products. But I just wish it was better. This is not a great remote. And the thing that surprised me most about Skit, I love Skit. Maybe in the future you'll be able to buy an upgraded remote control or something, which would be cool because this product is fairly priced and we'll get into that later. Let's go through the buttons. Triangles on the white buttons, obviously volume up and down. Number two up here is the input select. So you're gonna select between USB, optical, or analog. Underneath that is the process button right there. Process button turns on the surround channels. This mode just adds channels. It doesn't mess with the mains at all. Underneath that, you have shape. Press to enable shaping of all channels with the width and presence controls. These controls will affect the main channels as well as the surround channels. Also affects the headphone output. And the last button down there is mute. That mutes it. 
What's on the back? On the back. Start over here. This is the DAC section. So you have a USB-C and then you have an optical. And then right here is the analog input. Right here is the main output, right and left. Surround output, right and left. Center output, sub output, power toggle, power. I guess we should kind of go over what this is. This is a surround processor, a headphone amp, a DAC, and a preamp, all in one. You have to use separate amplifiers. Those amplifiers do not have to be just a straight power amplifier. They could be something like the IEMA A08 Pro. Any of those, you can just tweak the volume and leave the volume there, and then you would control the volume off of the SYN. The amps that I used on this were the Schitt Vidar, the first generation. Then I used the IEMA A07 for the center channel, and just some SMSL amplifier I had upstairs for the rear surrounds. The IEMA and the SMSL both had volume controls, the Vidar does not. Once I got it all set up correctly, then I just used the volume on here. So, what did I think? What are my final thoughts? This is quite a component from everything that it can do. Basically, it's a DAC, it's a headphone amp, and it's a surround processor without having any of the licensing or having any of the HDMI issues. This could be a really, really long video because we could dive deeply into each feature that this product has. But what I will say is I didn't know what, what to expect. I didn't think it was going to be a gimmick because Schkit has never really put out anything that's gimmicky. This is probably the most niche product that they've ever put out. But at the same time, it's not really a niche product because it's a headphone amp and a DAC. When I set this up, I was watching a cartoon of all things jake and the pirate something or other anyway it's a disney plus show because my daughter helped me set it up one thing that surprised me the most at the beginning was coming out of the rear channels were no voices and i couldn't figure out exactly what they did to get rid of the voices i talked to jason he said this is old technology this basically preceded Dolby Pro Logic. Mike Moffat had worked on this type of technology. It's called Matrix Surround. I don't quite understand any of it. I would kind of like to actually delve into it and understand a little bit more because it's good and it works. And I was surprised just how much it works. So if one is after simple immersive sound, then this is it. And at $400, it's not a terrible deal. This is not going to replace your Dolby Atmos. If you're really into home theater and after that perfect spatial placement of sounds, this isn't for you. But if you're after a more immersive experience, then I think you should take a hard look at this because I have had experiences with a receiver, an Atmos receiver in my bedroom, and it got to be such a pain, mainly with HDMI, that I pulled it out because a lot of times I just want something that's simple. What I have in there now is a sound bar with rear surrounds, which is great for movies and TV shows. It's not great for music though. That's where this thing differs because this is just a preamp. So your music is gonna sound a certain way depending upon well, what type of amps you have. As far as coloration, I didn't particularly hear anything because there definitely was a different vibe between my front speakers that were hooked up to the Vidar, my rear speakers that were hooked up to an inexpensive SMSL. So you will be able to influence the sound. Really, you can do this with anything. You will be able to influence the sound with the amplifiers that you have connected to this. So in, in summary of the surround sound, I was really surprised. It was way better than I thought it was gonna be. For most TV, be super happy with it. This probably will never replace my main home theater rig. But I will tell you, if there's ever an issue with it, I would not be scared to put this in its place if I wanted something quick and easy. And that's another thing, this is quick and easy. So this is something that's not going to fail if you're traveling and your kids or your wife or your significant other that may not be technologically inclined trying to get SpongeBob going for the kids. So it's easy and it works. I guess that's the takeaway. Headphone amp, it's good. <laughs> If there's anything that Schkit knows, it's headphone amps. I think it's an all-discrete headphone amplifier. I don't think, I think the DAC 
and the headphone amp aren't on par with the Magni and the Modi. They're a bit of a step down, but sonically, it's still great. And that's where I think this thing really shines. This is an all-in-one component. Outside of having speaker amps, this could be it for you. You can do gaming with the mic input, and then obviously you have the surround sound. I think what this is, the ultimate soundbar replacement. You don't just have a few speakers, you actually have a dedicated center speaker, dedicated front speakers, dedicated sub outs, dedicated rears. What you don't get on this though is any type of filtering. So I think there is a high pass filter on the sub out, but you're gonna have to control the low pass filtering on the subwoofer itself. I think the high pass filter is really high up in the treble region. You won't be able to put a high pass filter on your mains. But once again, this isn't for the home theater purists. I've got to have everything exactly correct. This is for somebody that wants more immersion. I didn't spend as much time listening to music through this as I would have liked to, but I will say it is much easier to get music sounding good with this unit than it is with a home theater receiver. Because I have to do a lot of tweaking with home theater receivers, unless I'm doing all channel stereo. If I'm doing all channel stereo, it's a little bit easier to get the music how I want it to sound, but I can get it to sound better if I'm using Dolby music or something like that. But again, I have to go in there, tweak a lot of settings, lots of levels. The other great thing about the Sin is just how easy it is to tweak in the levels. So it's easier, it's controls. And I think Schkit is doing, Kind of going back to the basics with their EQs now with this product to be able to make changes on the fly and not have to worry about 13 levels of complexity to get things where you want to get them. This is a very different component. It's not going to be right for everybody, but I think it is a way to bridge the gap between two channel and multi channel for anybody because a lot of the arguments are now taken off the table. You don't have an HDMI and you don't have the menu complexity that you have on most AVR receivers, well, all AVR receivers, really. This is kind of a revolutionary product, not just from, like, and not necessarily sonically. Like, it sounds great, right? But this is something that is completely different from other products on the market. I know Black Ice Audio has a stereo expander, but it's not multi-channel. That's another thing. This is $400. The Black Ice Audio, I think, comes in around $500, and I do have one. I'm going to do that review, too. That one has other features as well. It's a really interesting product, and I'm really interested to see how the customer base responds to this. Because at the end of the day, this is going to work for multi-channel immersive movies and music. Can't always say that about an AVR with an HDMI. This video got way longer than I thought it was going to be. So, if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio. Every single night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also use the affiliate links in the description. If you click and buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. It's a great way to support the channel. However, this is not an affiliated. I'm not affiliated with Skit. You can also sign up for Amazon Rune or Tidal. Links in the description. Click sign up even if you quit. I get a couple of bucks. Then you can give me a tip down at the bottom. Thanks button. Buy me a cup of coffee, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. Most importantly, you can just like this video and subscribe. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu, unless it's through your new shit sin and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man. <laughs>